Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the AI Papers Podcast Daily, where we, you know, break down a new AI research paper every single day. That's right. Today, we're diving into Sonar, uh, a model that's making some serious waves in the AI world. Yeah, it is. It's tackling a big challenge, uh, building an AI that understands meaning across a huge number of languages. Wow. And, and get this, even speech. Okay, so we're talking about more than just translation here, right? What makes Sonar different from, say, something like Google Translate? Exactly. Think of Google Translate as like swapping words between languages. It's great for getting the gist. Yeah. But it doesn't always capture the nuance. Right. Sonar aims to actually understand the meaning of a sentence regardless of the language. So the sonar is reading between the lines, getting to the heart of what's being said. That's a great way to put it. It's about creating a universal representation of meaning. I, I'm hooked. How does sonar even begin to do that? The research paper mentioned something about a two-step process. Yes. First, they train a model to understand text in over 200 languages. Wow. They do this by feeding it a massive amount of translated sentences, teaching it to create a sort of meaning code that's the same for sentences with the same meaning, even if they're in different languages. So it's like finding the common thread between phrases no matter what language they're wearing. Exactly. Okay. The second step is teaching sonar to understand speech. Okay. They use a clever technique called teacher-student training, where the text understanding part of sonar acts as the teacher guiding a new student model to turn speech into those same meaning codes. So the text part of sonar is like a mentor showing the speech part, the ropes. It is. That's pretty neat. And the researchers experimented with different ways to do this training, some focusing on capturing subtle details of meaning, others on the overall gist. Makes sense. Yeah. So we've got sonar understanding text and speech across a ton of languages, but what can it actually do? with all that knowledge. Well, this is where it gets really exciting. Okay. Sonar can do some impressive things. All right. For one, it can search for sentences with similar meanings across all those languages, even if the sentences are worded very differently. Okay. Imagine searching for a proverb in Mandarin and instantly finding its equivalent in Swahili. Wow, that's like a universal search engine for meaning. It is. What else can it do? It can also translate between languages, even for language pairs it hasn't seen before. That's called zero-shot translation. Wow. And its performance is surprisingly close to top-of-the-line models like NLLB, even though Sonar uses a much simpler approach. Hold on. So it's going head-to-head -head with the big players in translation, even though it's a newer model. Right. That's impressive. And there's more. Oh, wow. It can also translate speech into text again in multiple languages and in a zero-shot way. Okay. In some cases, it even outperforms Whisper, a model specifically designed for speech recognition. It's beating a model that's specialized in speech. That's wild. Yeah. What does this mean for real-world applications? Where could sonar be used? The possibilities are huge. Think about real-time translation tools that actually understand the meaning of what you're saying, not just translating word for word. Yeah. Or imagine being able to access information that's currently locked away in another language. Right. Sonar could even help transcribe and understand speech in languages with limited data. This feels like a big step towards breaking down language barriers in a way we've never seen before. It really is. It's about making information and technology accessible to everyone, regardless of what language they speak. Okay, I'm definitely seeing the potential here, but no model is perfect, right? Yeah. What are some of Sonar's limitations? That's a great question. While Sonar is impressive, yeah. it doesn't quite match Whisper's performance on some languages with a lot of existing data, like Mandarin or German. Okay. Whisper has the advantage of being trained on massive data sets specifically for those languages. So it's not that Sonar is inherently worse, it's just that Whisper has a head start in those particular areas. Exactly. Another limitation is that Sonar sometimes paraphrases when transcribing speech. Right. So it might not be ideal for situations that require a word-for-word -word transcript. So it's better at capturing the essence of what's being said rather than transcribing it verbatim. That's a good way to think about it. Okay. But even with these limitations, the advancements Sonar represents are significant. All right. So we've covered a lot of ground here, but I'm curious to learn more about how Sonar actually works under the hood. Yeah. Can we dive a little deeper into the technical details in the next part of our deep dive? Absolutely. We can explore its architecture and the different training methods they used. There's a lot more to uncover. Perfect. We'll be back in a moment to continue our deep dives into Sonar. So stay tuned. Welcome back to our deep dive into Sonar. Thanks. Before we jump into the technical details, let's uh, recap what makes this model so unique. Yeah, that's a good idea. We've established that Sonar is all about 
understanding meaning across a huge number of languages, both written and spoken. And it's showing some, you know, really impressive results, even outperforming some specialized models in certain tasks. Right. So let's take a peek under the hood and uh, see how Sonar actually achieves this. Okay. The research paper dives into its architecture, which relies on something called a transformer encoder decoder. Okay, that sounds pretty technical. Can you break that down for us a little bit? Absolutely. Imagine you have a team of expert translators working on a complex text. Okay. The encoder is like the team that carefully reads and analyzes the original text, extracting its core meaning. Okay. They then create a condensed set of notes that capture the essence of the message. So the encoder is all about distilling the meaning into a more concise form. Exactly. Okay. Then those notes are passed on to the decoder, which is like the second team of translators. Right. They use those notes to reconstruct the message in another language, ensuring the meaning remains intact. Ah, so the encoder breaks it down and the decoder builds it back up in a new language. Wow all based on that shared understanding of the meaning. That's a great way to visualize it. That's really cool. Now, what's interesting is that Sonar uses a fixed size representation of the sentences, meaning no matter how long or complex the original sentence is. Oh, wow. It's like condensing a whole paragraph into a single powerful sentence that captures the essence. That makes sense. It needs to be able to handle a wide range of inputs from short phrases to lengthy sentences. Exactly. And this concentrated meaning acts as the bridge between languages and even between text and speech. So it's not just about translating words. It's about creating a universal language of meaning that Sonar can work with. Precisely. Now, the researchers didn't stop there. Okay. They actually experimented with different ways to train Sonar, mm -hmm. which is a crucial aspect of developing any AI model. Oh, right. Training is like teaching the model how to do its job, right? Exactly. One approach they used is called a translation objective. Basically, they train Sonar to be a really good translator by feeding it tons of parallel texts in different languages. So it's like learning by example, seeing how humans have translated similar texts in the past. That's a good analogy. Cool. But they also explored other training methods, like challenging sonar to reconstruct the original sentence after it had been encoded. So they'd give it a sentence, have it create that meaning code, and then ask it to rebuild the original sentence from scratch. It is. That's a tough test. And it helps ensure that the meaning code captures all the important nuances of the original sentence. Wow. They also experimented with a technique called denoising autoencoding, which is like training sonar to filter out noise and focus on the core message. So it's like teaching sonar to be a good listener, ignoring distractions and getting to the heart of what's being said. Exactly. All these different training methods help shape sonar into the impressive model it is today. It sounds like a lot of trial and error, fine tuning the training process to get the best result. It is. It's like training for a marathon. You need the right techniques and practice to achieve peak performance. Definitely. Now, speaking of training, the research mentions using a massive data set of text and speech from various sources. Yeah. They use data sets like Common Voice, Must See, Vox Populi, and Libra Speech, which contain recordings and transcripts in dozens of languages. So they expose Sonar to as much language data as possible, giving it a broad understanding of how humans communicate. Precisely. The more data a model like this is trained on, the better it becomes at understanding the subtleties of language. Right. It's all about learning from the vast amount of information that's out there. Makes sense. Now, how did they actually test how well Sonar performs? Yeah. Was it just about how accurate its translations were? They went beyond just translation accuracy. Accuracy. Okay. They use benchmarks called XM and XM++, which measure how well a model captures the semantic similarity between sentences, even across different languages. So they're testing whether sonar can tell if two sentences say one in Spanish and one in Mandarin essentially mean the same thing. Exactly. And sonar outperformed other state-of-the-art models on these tests, which is really impressive. It sounds like it aced those exams. It did. That speaks volumes about its ability to understand meaning beyond just word-for-word -word translation. It does, and it highlights the power of Sonar's approach. Yeah. It's not a one-trick pony. Right. It can handle translation, cross-lingual search, and semantic similarity analysis, all with remarkable accuracy. So it's a multi-talented model. But it is. We've talked about its architecture, its training, and its impressive performance. But what about those limitations we discussed earlier? Can you elaborate on those? Of course, as we mentioned, Sonar doesn't quite match Whisper's performance on some languages with a lot of existing data, like Mandarin or German. Right. That's simply because Whisper has been trained on a much larger data set 
for those specific languages. Right. So it's not that sonar is inherently worse. It just hasn't had the same level of specialized training in those areas. Exactly. Okay. Another limitation is that sonar sometimes paraphrases when transcribing speech, which might not be ideal if you need a strictly verbatim transcript. But for understanding the gist of what's being said, it seems to do a remarkable job. Absolutely. And to be fair, even human transcribers sometimes have to make judgment calls about how to best capture the meaning of spoken language. True enough. So even with these limitations, it feels like sonar represents a significant leap forward in AI and language understanding. It certainly does. And it's exciting to consider how this technology will continue to evolve and improve as researchers continue to refine models like sonar. It feels like we're on the cusp of a new era in language technology, where communication barriers are becoming less and less significant. It's a truly transformative time. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned about sonar so far. That's a great idea. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive from its architecture and training to its capabilities and limitations. We've explored the technical intricacies and discussed its potential impact on various fields. Now let's shift gears and talk about what all of this means for the future of AI and language processing. Yeah. Join us in the final part of our deep dive as we wrap up our exploration of sonar and consider the broader implications of this groundbreaking research. Welcome back to the AI Papers Podcast Daily. We've been on quite a journey uh, exploring the depth of sonar, a model that's making waves in the world of AI and language processing. It has been, yeah, fascinating to unpack the research and see how sonar pushes the boundaries of what AI can do with language. What stands out to you from all this research? For me, it's the sheer ambition of creating a model that can handle so many languages, including speech. I agree. The scale is impressive, but what's really remarkable is how well sonar performs, especially in zero-shot translation. Hey. Translating between languages it's never been explicitly trained on. Right. It highlights the potential for AI to grasp the fundamental structure of language. That's the part that really got me thinking. It's like sonar is learning something deeper than just word associations. It's almost like it's developing a true understanding of meaning. That's a great point. It hints at the possibility of AI systems that go beyond simply manipulating language, uh, moving towards genuine comprehension. We've talked a lot about the potential benefits of sonar, but I think it's also important to acknowledge that any powerful technology comes with considerations about responsible development and use. Absolutely. As AI becomes more sophisticated, we need to be mindful of its potential impact and ensure its development aligns with ethical considerations. Right. Things like potential biases, data privacy, and the role of human expertise are all important aspects of the conversation. It's a complex landscape, but I believe AI can be a powerful tool for good. Hmm. Imagine a world where language is no longer a barrier to accessing information, collaborating on projects, or connecting with people from different cultures. That's a compelling vision, and while there are challenges to address, models like Sonar give us a glimpse of what's possible. This deep dive into Sonar has been a wild ride, leaving me with a sense of awe and a bunch of questions about what the future holds. That's the beauty of exploring cutting-edge research. It sparks our curiosity and pushes us to imagine new possibilities. Well said. We've only scratched the surface of AI and language, and I'm excited to see what discoveries and innovations lie ahead. I couldn't agree more. This is a rapidly evolving field with immense potential. That's all the time we have for today, folks. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into sonar. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning. See you on the next deep dive.